Deputy President Paul Mashadili says he'll consult with other parties, including the EFF, UDM and ATM, to map up legislative frameworks on coalition governments. At the same time, the DA has accused the ANC of trying to hijack the dialogue on coalitions, which was held in Cape Town this weekend. DA Chief Whoop, Sivuwe Gwakube, joins us for more on the story. Sivuwe, were interesting that the DA is accusing the ANC of trying to hijack the uh, talks, whereas the other parties, some of your smaller uh, parties, feel that it was an ANC-DA show. <laughs> good evening, Kathy, and uh, good evening to, to your viewers. Look, our main concern um, was that we were always going to attend any uh, attempt to come together as political leaders to find a way and a solution for the coalition governments in the country. We've seen at a local level how unstable they can be, and the biggest losers really are the citizens and the residents of whatever area that may be. So we were committed to going there, but it was quite surprising then uh, upon attending that the deputy um, uh, minister, Park Stau, starts announcing that, in fact, government has already drafted um, some legislation that has not been introduced in Parliament. Because the reason why that was interesting uh, and surprising is because, of course, um, government has been mute about any uh, legislative interventions, and it felt as though, you know, then, you know, brought into the, the talks um, to legitimize a process that government had already started. And, of course, Cathy, according to the parliamentary rules, Government cannot essentially um, usurp the process by simply introducing legislation, whereas there's already legislation, as you know, that we have introduced. So we do suspect that perhaps the ANC is a little bit reluctant um, in terms of um, uh, uh, supporting opposition bills. But for us, I mean, it doesn't really matter who has made the proposals. The, the reality is that we need to come together, we need to be a lot more mature as political leaders, and we need to, you know, prepare ourselves for an eventuality of hung legislatures and a hung national legislature next year. I think outside of, of, of that issue of being blindsided effectively by this announcement that there is already draft legislation, uh, particularly targeted at local government, that is already uh, sort of being workshopped by the ANC. Um, the DA and the ANC seem to largely, I think, agree on the fact that, number one, there needs to be a framework. Number two, that there needs to be a threshold of sort um, for any parties that uh, can, be, can have a seat at the table uh, for, for participating in coalition talks. Yeah. Look, I mean, that became a very big uh, uh, contentious uh, subject, obviously, over the past two days, uh, Kathy. But, you know, obviously the disappointing um, thing for me was that, you know, there were a raft of uh, other proposals on the table. And the legislation making process is such that people are able to, um, particularly political parties that are represented in Parliament, which are some of the smaller parties, is we've been consistently inviting these political parties to say, here are proposals on the table. Can we workshop, panel beat, and see what we can come up with? One that is that makes sure that it is the citizens who are placed first um, and the interests are placed first, but also one that we can agree on. And so really, I think it's unfair to then simply say that you know, the DA and the ANC were ganging up on smaller parties. One, these were these are proposals. We worked on these proposals as the Democratic Alliance since October last year. I personally wrote to all the political parties represented in Parliament to gain their thoughts, and none of them really, you know, took any interest in, uh, in, in you know, in, in having an input in the process. Now we've got the bills in in, in front of Parliament. I do expect that political leaders should really engage themselves in the process. As, as in terms of the ANC and, and our agreement, I think we were likely going to find a lot of agreement because, Kathy, a lot of work has gone into looking at international best practice. So um, it's also, you know, it, 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 it was expected on my side, really, that we would find uh, common ground with the ANC because, one, these are sensible proposals that are on the table. And number two, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to find common ground when uh, a lot of their proposals have been heavily borrowed from ours.
Let's talk about the issue of proportional representation potentially in a framework that governs coalitions and the extent to which um, that should also be the starting point um, for who participates um, in those negotiations. Again, of course, you'd have some parties, because of proportional representations that end up having um, seats in government, you know, in, in, in parliament rather, um, for, 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 for um, the, the outlook of parliament that of course seeks to ensure that minority parties and their voices are also represented. Do you think that that needs to be carried over into the national politics and national coalition um, frameworks because of the challenges that it simply might present? Mm. Look, Kathy, the, uh, if one looks at coalition governments around the world, you realize that one of the key markers of success is the introduction of some level of thresholds. And that's why in our proposals we introduced the, the, the you know, having thresholds at a local, provincial and a, and a national level. And of course, I, I understand that this is sometimes can be a divisive issue because there are political parties who clearly don't think that they may be able to garner, you know, 1% um, uh, support um, of the national vote in an election, which I, I understand. However, when one looks at what the, the Constitution says, the Constitution guarantees general representation. And even if, Kathy, we were to introduce a 1% threshold, which will go a long way in terms of stabilizing coalition governments where you don't have 10 political parties that are part of a coalition government. We've seen how it doesn't work in places like the city of Johannesburg. Even if you were to introduce a 1% threshold um, in parliament, for instance, or in a, in a government uh, coalition agreement, you would still be able, in our view, to meet the requirements that the constitution has of general representation. So I don't think this is a matter of locking smaller parties out, but it's a matter of saying, where are we, where can we give and take in order to essentially achieve the, the, the stability that we seek to have? And so I don't think that it's anti-democratic, and I don't, I think that even if we were to take it in front of a court of law, I think we would satisfy the requirement that the Constitution has of general representation, because at least if you can say, I have 1%, of support from 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 the the voters, Kathy. One, we know that you're a serious player, and you've got a lot to lose by how you conduct yourself in the coalition agreement. Number two, you can really do claim that you represent a, a big portion of the South African electorate. Sevilla Guajube, we leave it there. She is the DA's chief whip.